Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. My guess is that you're all aware that there are members of our Redeemer that we rarely, if ever, see here at church anymore. These are our people who, because of declining health or an inability to move as well, they, they aren't able to come to church. And so part of the work of your pastors is to take church to them. You might imagine that in that arrangement, the pastor would be the encourager and the person at home would be the one receiving the encouragement. After all, no one likes when their health is in decline. It's uncomfortable. The pastor gets to go and leave while that person remains in whatever suffering they're in. No one likes to see their independence slowly stripped away. But I think any pastor would tell you that that there are, are certain individuals or certainly moments where the in, one who is the encourager ends up being the encouraged. I know that's the case for me. In my previous converse, congregation, if, if I were feeling like I needed some encouragement, I would go and I would visit Esther. Esther was a widow. Her husband had died some years before of Alzheimer's. She lived in a very modest home with her spirited mutt, Ricky. Esther's eyesight had dwindled to the point that she could not drive anymore. And she was nearly deaf to the point that when I would call Esther and I would say, hi, Esther, this is Pastor Courtright. Inevitably, she would say, Dr. Who? And I would say, no, Pastor. Oh, Pastor. She didn't really walk anymore. She more shuffled around. She joked that she just followed her cane wherever it led her. Yet Esther was one of those people that was grateful, uh, grateful for more than the things and, and the, the um, lack of pain in her life, not grateful for that, but for her Lord. Uh, one of those people who, by her very spirit, encouraged anyone who came around her. She said that when she woke up in the morning, she would put her feet, when they touched the ground, she would say, thank you, Jesus, for, for another day. And it almost seemed like she believed I was bringing her priceless treasures when I would give her the Lord's Supper. And of course I, I was, but I needed her to remind me of that. She would stop me when she heard the word forgiveness and she'd say, oh, I just love that word, forgiven. You know, I thought of Esther today as I was preparing and reading about the one leper who returned back to give thanks to God. Certainly when we run into grateful people, people like that leper, people like Esther, there's something magnetic about them, something that makes us say, you know what they have, that's what I want. And of course, as Christians, we have that. I want you to, to, to know that gratitude, what we're talking about today, is not the same as having a sunny personality or being happy all the time. A person who smiles all the time is not a better Christian than the person who doesn't. Gratitude is not tied to a specific kind of personality. It's tied to a reality that is ours in Jesus. And it's good for us to stop like we are this morning and to consider once more the reasons that we have for an enduring kind of gratitude. Uh, reasons like those lepers had in our story. It's easy to see why these ten men would have been grateful. It's easy to see when you consider what their situation was before they met Jesus. Living truly in a full-time state of quarantine. A life of separation. Separated from their families, from their homes, from the religious life of their community. It was an ongoing struggle that was physical and emotional and spiritual. And it's no wonder then, because misery loves company, that they banded together. But do you know what misery loves more than company? It loves being delivered from misery. And so when they heard that Jesus was coming near, they gathered as close as they could and they joined their voices as one and they called out to him, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. And Jesus gave them a very simple command. He said, go and show yourselves to the priests. 
These men would have known that the only reason a leper would ever go and present himself before a priest was to be proven healed by that priest. And on the way, it happened. Open sores covered over. Painful lesions disappeared. And suffering that that lasted months, maybe years, came to an end. Can you imagine a scenario scenario where not all ten of those men would have been grateful for the healing? It's hard to imagine that was the case. Then why was it that only one returned to give thanks to Jesus? Wasn't it because that he realized that even more than the healing, he had found in the healer all that he needed? And really, I think this is the distinction between what we might call general gratitude, which everyone could have, And the kind of Christian gratitude, the fruit of the Spirit that we're talking about this morning. You know, general gratitude is taking into account, it's recognizing all of the good things that you have in your life, the gifts, so to speak. But Christian gratitude looks up beyond the gifts and sees the giver, sees the one from whom all good things come. I don't want you to think that this sermon is my way of doing what parents do to kids when they say, now, let's be polite, what do you say? And the congregation responds, thank you, Lord. You know, Jesus was not uh, upset that they had not come because he just needed them to give thanks to him face to face. He wasn't saying to himself, well, they better put their thank yous in the mail. He recognized that their lack of gratitude to the giver was really a response of something wrong in their hearts, not recognizing the giver for whom he really was. And how do we, as Christians, how do we grow in this thing called gratitude? What do we do if we don't find it present in our hearts? What stops us from having this gratitude Now, certainly it could be that we find ourselves in in seasons of suffering, seasons where we are separated from good things, perhaps experiencing suffering on levels that are emotional and physical and spiritual, which makes gratitude something hard to come by. But it also could be quite the opposite, that in those moments in life when everything is going well, there we find that gratitude is absent When you have a nice home and and a steady income and everything seems to be going well, you stop in those moments to look up and acknowledge the giver. In our first lesson from the book of Deuteronomy, that was precisely the warning that Moses was giving to these people about to enter the promised land after their wandering in the desert and their years of suffering. It would seem they had finally arrived. An easy life. And the warning was simple. It was this. When your cupboards are full and your bed is soft, don't forget. Don't forget the Lord, the one who stands behind all of these gifts. And that's the same warning that we have to take into account today. Don't forget the Lord who stands behind them. It might be easy to think the answer to ingratitude would be to take an inventory of all the good things that you enjoy in life. And certainly there's nothing wrong with that. It's a good place to start. Go ahead and start one of those gratitude journals where every night you write down five things that you're thankful for in that day. Or have the tradition that may be yours already, where around the Thanksgiving table you you all say something that you're thankful for. But don't stop there. Don't stop by simply acknowledging good things in your life that you enjoy in the moment. Now lift your eyes higher to the one who gives them, the one who stands behind all of these things. And again, that was the difference between those nine lepers who were certainly thankful to have all of their suffering from their leprosy that relieved. But the difference between him and the Samaritan who went back was that the Samaritan lifted his eyes to see Jesus. 
to see in Jesus all that he truly need, much more than simply healing for his body, but truly for his soul, to see his God. And that really is the picture of gratitude I want you to, to see in your own mind. That Samaritan on his knees in front of his Lord, praising God for all that Jesus had done. And when you stop to think about it, we too have those realities, those reasons for us to, to come before our Lord on our knees and to praise God. Even someone who is not a Christian would recognize that if, if Christians believed what Christians ought to believe, they should be the most thankful people. If we truly believe that, that God loved this world so much that he sent Jesus, his own son, into this world for us, if we believe that, that through Jesus and by his death and, and his resurrection, God took away the sin that separated us from him and in doing so took away the suffering that comes from that separation, the suffering that would be eternal in physical and spiritual. And that in Jesus we have life. Even after this life is over, we have life eternal. If we truly believe this, how could we be anything but grateful? And of course, we have good reason to believe it because our Lord did come. He did die. He did rise again. He did call you and me into his kingdom so that like the Samaritan who came before him that day, he says to us, to each one of us, go. Yes, go today. Your faith has made you well. This is our reality and it truly is so simple. It's the difference between a general sense of gratitude and an enduring gratitude that's ours. I say it's, it's simple, but I, I don't think that it's easy. This is something that we have to develop and grow in as Christians, this gift of gratitude. Gratitude. You know, I wish it were as easy as giving you a simple rule, something like, for every complaint that you have, sometimes it's okay to complain. There are things to complain about. Why don't you also come up with three things you're thankful for? That might be a good rule to live by, but it's truly not that simple. In fact, I, I wonder and I fear that some of us who, who struggle with depression or feelings of, of darkness might begin to think, if... If I'm supposed to be full of gratitude, but I don't feel it, does that mean somehow that I'm, that I'm not a Christian? And I'll say it again. There is a difference between gratitude and, and happiness. Those two are not synonyms. Gratitude goes much deeper. Gratitude may not always look like the gratitude we see in our gospel with the Samaritan falling before our Lord Jesus and, and crying out, with sounds of praise to God. Now, it might sound more like a quiet sigh spoken in our own heads or perhaps out loud, maybe even after we've spent some time crying. A quiet sigh that, that in the end comes back to our Lord Jesus and says, Lord, thank you. Thank you for loving me. Lord, Thank you for being the light in a world that only feels dark at times. For being my hope. Yes, for being my God. This is what an enduring gratitude looks like. And it's ours by the realities that Jesus has won for us. And I think I could say safely that we are all thankful for this. This reality that is ours in Jesus. But do you know what else I'm thankful for today? I'm thankful for people like Esther. People who, when you run into them, remind you with this perspective that goes beyond the moment, whatever the moment is, and sees the big picture and point us to the realities that everything in the end is going to be made right by our Lord. And that is reason to give thanks and to praise. I don't think that Esther was trying to encourage me. I'm pretty sure she wasn't. 
And I know that her gratitude was not just a show put on for her pastor. This was genuine. This was from her heart. The kind of gratitude that, that simply filled her heart to the point that it, it spilled over. And if you bumped into her, it spilled onto you. And Esther's gratitude certainly spilled on to me. And I hope that today in some small way, God's word through me has spilled this gratitude on to you so that we would be like the Samaritan, the leper who came back, praising God for all that he had done. May God grant us this gratitude that endures, a gratitude rooted in our Lord Jesus. Amen.